welcome back to Made to Flourish with your host, Ali Alamea, where we learn to blossom by faith and flourish within. I believe the Lord is calling us to rise up, take a stand, and flourish. To listen to this episode, grab some water, a cup of coffee, or tea, sit back, kick up your feet, relax, and enjoy this talk show. Hey peeps, what's poppin'? So, some of you guys might know the little bit of changes that have been happening in my life, like my career path change and job change, and I just thought that this would be a great time to talk about this topic, and the title of this will be called, Though the Seasons Change. Honestly, this is something that I really like to talk about, especially after a few years ago when I heard this one song by United Pursuit, and it's called Seasons Change. I really feel to share the lyrics of this song like I have in some other episodes with the lyrics because they move my heart so much and I feel like they would really bless you. So, if you want to look it up, it's called Seasons Change by United Pursuit, and I'll go ahead and read those now. It starts off by saying, though the music changes and the songs we sing, we lift our praises to our loving God and King. And it says that twice, but I just want to take a moment to just really chew on these lyrics because no matter if the music changes or the songs that we listen change or the things that we're experiencing in life, Our praises should always lift up to God. And I just love how it reminds us that He is our loving God and King. So, no matter what we're going through, or what we're listening to, or what path of life we're in, we can remember that He is our loving King. And of course, this isn't scripture, but it's just such powerful words used as lyrics in a song that I really feel like it's important to share as I'm going to talk about this topic. Then it jumps into saying, though the seasons change, your love remains. And I love to change that to his love remains. When I'm singing this in my own prayer time or when I'm like talking to someone I really just say, though the seasons change, his love remains. But it even is better when you're listening to these lyrics and you use it as a prayer. You can say, though the seasons change, your love remains as you're talking to God and it makes it more personal. Okay, my favorite part is next. It says, Lord, you've been faithful to plant the seeds and you will be faithful to always send your rain. And I just love that because it reaffirms how faithful God is. No matter what's going on in the dry season, in the fruitful season, we can remember that no matter what, especially in the dry season, he will bring the rain to provide the fruit once the seeds are already planted. Like, you know, there's different seasons where we plant seeds and we wait and God waters through the waiting period and then the bud comes out and then it starts blossoming and flourishing and here we're called made to flourish right so what beautiful analogy and the last part of this it says when we were far apart you came running with open arms and I really love that because it helps me remember when we were far gone or just doing our own thing God and Jesus and Holy Spirit were waiting with their arms wide open and came running towards us like he chases us and has chased us for time and time again waiting for us to just turn to him and look to him and spend time with him but I think it's beautiful when we can recognize even when we were far away like they he was waiting and it's just incredible to think that and then my official favorite part of this whole song is though the seasons change your love remains and I just really want to focus on that and just kind of stick to this quote Though the seasons change, his love remains. And it kind of rhymes, right? Has a little jingle to it. (laughs) So before we get any further, I would like to say a prayer. So if you would cross your hands for me. (laughs) I'm just kidding. But um, yeah, I'll say a prayer now. Thank you, Jesus, for this time that you have set apart for me to share with the people that are listening to this episode. I ask that you would guide my words, guide my thoughts, and guide just this podcast, this episode, Lord, that your presence would be here. Holy Spirit, I invite your presence and I acknowledge that you are here, that you are present, that you're the one that 
allows us to be close to the Father, close to Jesus. And I pray that anything that tries to come against your will and your plan would be broken off in Jesus' name and that we would be able to focus on what you have set before us, God, that your voice, your words, your truth would be so much louder than any lie that tries to come up and tries to distract. And I just ask that all distraction and confusion fades away at the name of Jesus and that your words and your voice prevails and is so much louder than anything else in the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, I want to start off with one of my favorite books of the Bible. Well, I'm not going to read the whole book, but I want to read a verse, a couple verses from there, and that book is Ecclesiastes. I don't know if I told you guys just my love for this book, but I'll definitely have to have a whole episode on that. But to get started, I want to read from Ecclesiastes 3 verses 1 and 2, and it says, For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck, what is planted. And I really love this because it gives the imagery of gardening you know and even our lives when we are born and when we die which will happen in everyone's life but i love that it goes into the part that says a time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted and i don't know about you guys but i feel like sometimes the lord literally plants us in a place for us to stay put and grow like build roots and really get all the nutrients we need and as soon as it's time to shift that season it feels like he literally plucks us out of it and places us somewhere else like if you can picture um repotting plants i don't know if many of you guys are gardeners um i'm not definitely not but i have some friends that are and they're talking about repotting their plants and it's just so interesting because once the roots get too big and once it doesn't fit in the pot anymore you need to repot it or the plant will die so i think of this example even in this like there's a time to plant those seeds there's a time where you need to like dig in the ground or put some soil but first you put the seeds and then or you put the seeds in the soil or if it's in a pot you put soil and then the seeds but there's a time to plant those seeds and then after a season of watering sitting in the sun and all of the other things plants do <laughs> before they can grow and be plucked up or be moved and transplanted to a new pot there's that time you know where it needs to stay and grow but then the time to be moved and plucked comes as well and I just picture this so clearly as like us being planted somewhere and then being plucked up to a different place or to a close place but it's just something totally different like a different scenery or different community or not always different community but just like a different season in life I don't know like is this a Christian word that we or Christian phrase that we use but I have no other way of explaining this besides using like a different season so I hope you guys understand but with that being said I just wanted to put a point out there like sometimes we have to get out of our routine and out of our normal life our quotation norm <laughs> what is actually comfortable in our lives to find exactly what we are supposed to do or supposed to be involved in to then go where God is calling us and allow him to do the work he wants to do in our hearts. I think sometimes when we don't respond or don't move or don't go do something else or even if we don't stay, we're not allowing the Lord to do the work he wants to in our heart. And I know that I've talked about like whether staying or going, but this is like even if you're staying in a place, like just the different season shift or different time shift or time frame, you know, not necessarily going somewhere new, but like recognizing like, okay, is it fall season? Is it winter? Is it summer? Is it spring? That doesn't necessarily mean you have to go somewhere new, but just what is happening around us and how are we able to adapt or able to move forward or able to really allow the kingdom to come down to earth through our lives in the current time we're living in. I think we can get caught up in our day-to-day -day so much to where we 
go on autopilot and we're not allowing the Holy Spirit to really minister to our hearts and allow us to do something different. Like if we have a specific routine of waking up and drinking our matcha or our coffee or our tea and like going to work right on time, staying at work and then leaving, having dinner and then watching TV or hanging out with friends. If we do that every single day without giving room for God to do something new, like we should be able to allow him to interrupt our routine to be able to let his presence pour out you know and i think sometimes we have to shift our routine or shift our kind of day-to-day lifestyle just to see that there's something new and something refreshing that's here and i can say that because last year i was working at this like mental health clinic that i actually loved a lot And I thought that I was going to make it a career. I really wanted to like impact the community in that way because I love discipleship and talking with people, hearing their stories, listening to them. But it was totally different than what I thought. And I was so scared to let go. I was so nervous to like quote unquote quit. But the Lord was asking me to do something new, not necessarily telling me what to do or where to go or how to do it but really just asking me to take a step back. And that was scary for me, especially because I was comfortable and I was in my normal day-to-day, like, what do I do today? I'm waking up and going to work and I'm doing this and doing that. But like, I wasn't happy at all. (laughs) Only because that season was coming to an end and it was coming to a close, but I did not sense it. I didn't really perceive it until I leaned on some of my trusted friends that really helped me realize, okay, this season is kind of shifting. And in a way, I started to think like, oh no, am I not pleasing the Lord because I'm quote unquote quitting something else? Or what can I do to really know that I am still following in the footsteps of my father and in the center of God's will for my life? Because I don't want to do something in my own strength and I don't want to do something just because it's like my own convenience and I don't want to quit just because it's hard but I really want to allow the Lord to prune me grow me and use me in every which way and I want that for you too because it's so beautiful when we could really surrender and trust him and allow him to be the guider and leader of our footsteps but to finish that thought before I get distracted I just wanted to say all of that being said is that the one thing that really popped out and stood out to me was that I remember that song and I just felt like Holy Spirit was whispering to my heart, though the seasons change, his love remains. And then that became my prayer, like, though the seasons change, God, Abba, Father, your love remains and nothing can take that away. I wanted to read a verse here in Daniel verse or chapter 2 verses 20 and 21 where it says and declared may the name of god be praised forever and ever for wisdom and power belong to him he changes the times and seasons he removes kings and establishes kings he gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding and i really want to focus on that part which is verse 21 where it says He changes the times and seasons. He removes kings and establishes kings. Man, how powerful is that though? Like literally, he changes the times and seasons. So I think we can hold confidence or be confident knowing that when seasons change and something closes and a new time begins, we can be certain that the Lord is the one that literally aligns those things. I think sometimes um, certain situations can end very quickly, abruptly, and we're like, what? This makes no sense. I don't understand it. Or things can start up out of nowhere. Like if someone starts a new relationship or gets a new job offer or ends up meeting a family member that they haven't had contact with so long and it's like, whoa, this happened out of nowhere. How does that happen? But it just gives so much confidence and hope that things that are supposed to happen will happen in the right time. And I don't know about you, but this really gives me a lot of peace. And I love that. And the next part says, he removes kings and establishes kings. 
We can take this verse many different ways, but I just want to focus on the part where it really just shows that God can place people in the right place and remove them at the right time. Despite what people have as different opinions or what people say, like if we are called to do something, God will establish us in that place. And if there's many people that are in that place before us, like he can remove those people if needed. Like I'm not saying to go and pray for these people to be removed and for us to take over, but I'm just saying that like if we are called to do something and there's someone that isn't supposed to be in that position anymore, after a while or in the right time, that person will be removed or stepped down and then the door for us to go up, like to step up and be in that position will open and we don't have to force ourselves there. We don't have to push past and like do things in the dark or do things in a bad way to get to that place, but truly just pressing into the Lord trusting his timing and knowing with all of our hearts that he will establish our steps and establish us in a position in a place at the right time. Amen. Another little jingle for us is God's love is still here and even if the seasons change, he is still near. So many things can change around us and the situations we are in can shift. Maybe we need to get a new job or we have to move somewhere or we're just in a different life, time, in a different season. God is so close to us and his presence doesn't change and doesn't shift and doesn't go anywhere. We can always grasp or grab a hold of his presence and his heart and he is near. So I want you guys to think of that when fear ever tries to come up or you wonder what will happen if this changes or what will happen if I have to start over or go somewhere else or things don't go the way I think. Like remember, anytime that fear comes up, remember that God is near and his love remains. Though the seasons change, his love remains. His love is here with you in the here and now, today, in the present moment, not in the future, not in the past, but today and till forever. So if you remember in the lyrics of the song, it talked about God being faithful. And I just want to bring that up again because he is so faithful, faithful to provide a way out, faithful to be with us in the moments where we have to stay and we don't see the way out. And he is faithful even when we might not understand what's happening next. And he's faithful even when we're trying to figure things out. He's faithful even when we are joyful and everything's working out and we are living day to day without exciting plans happening, but just literally living. He is there. He's close to us. I would like to share another verse with you guys. And if you are wanting to flip to that, it is in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 8. And it says, the grass withers the flowers fade, but the word of our God remains forever. So as we're talking about seasons changing, we can know and see that yes, the flowers wither and winter comes, but his word remains forever. So that can also correlate with like whenever anything shifts and changes, his love, his word is something that we can hold on to tangibly and it won't change. It won't shift. It won't go far away. We have access to that, especially if we live in America. Like we have access to the Bible app. We have access to our Bibles, maybe like three or four like I do, or a friend has one and we can even look it up online, which is so beneficial for people like me with a kind of fast attention span needing to have like the speed on two times to listen to it. Try it out. It really works. You can absorb a lot of stuff if you have ADHD. Wink, wink. (laughs) Anyway, it's really amazing how many different things that we have to be able to access the word of God. And it's never changing. It's something that could comfort us and give us hope and give us everything that we need in the moments where things might be feeling like they're falling apart, in moments where we're not certain what the next outcome will be. But we can be certain that God remains the same and that he is our comfort. If we picture ourselves as a blossoming flower or one that's growing with deep roots in the Lord, we can see and have the confidence to know 
that our flower in the Lord will not wither because we find our strength in him and we find our hope in him and our confidence and our backbone in him so that when the seasons change, we won't wither and wilt away and fade away, but we will grow stronger and look taller, stand taller as well and have the strength from the Lord himself and we will be able to walk with our head held high. I want to read one more verse in Genesis chapter 8, 22. Okay, I had to pause this because I was reading it on my phone and for some reason the verse said, while the earth remaineth. And I was like, wait, I can't say that, but I just froze. <laughs> okay, so Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. As long as the earth endures seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, and day and night will not cease. I was looking into this a little bit and I saw that this verse is from after the flood when God told Noah that the seasons would continue as long as the earth existed. So what does this tell us? I feel like this can be an example of knowing there will be times in life where there's a shift of season and just like the natural where it comes to winter, spring, summer, fall, we have this kind of style or thing. Sorry, my stuttering over here. <laughs> we have this kind of like shift in seasons with the Lord. And I don't know if you guys have ever experienced it, but there's even some songs that say it's springtime with you. And the Lord really speaks to me a lot in metaphors of gardening and just springtime and it's always in the time when new things are arriving or when new things are coming in my life and I just love it so much because it's really encouraging but there is the winter season of waiting and being still and really trusting and not being so in a hurry or moving along and it seems like things are dry and not really fruitful you know but then springtime comes a little bit fruitful and then summertime and then fall and it's just really cool it's really amazing and I don't want to speak too much into that because I really want to leave it to you guys to take back to the Lord and ask him what does that mean for me like what does seasons changing in my life look like Lord can you show me and really just rem remembering that if you feel like you're in a time where seasons change or me too if we feel like we're in a season or in a time where something's shifting and it's not so exciting or bright or happy or if it's the opposite like it's now the hard time has passed and is behind us and now we're entering into a place where so many miracles and things we've prayed for for years are coming to pass and we're just like what this is the most amazing season of my life like what does that mean how do we know like how long that lasts if it's just a couple months like I don't want to put any framework to that and I really want to challenge you to go before the Lord and ask him like what season am I in right now Lord and what does that look like? What should I be doing in this season currently in the present? And then also going to him and asking him, what do I do to prepare for the next season? Because as we know, um, well, maybe not everyone, but if we're in Alaska or have a lot of snow during our winters and have cold winters, we do have to do some work before winter arrives, depending on if our car is prepared for the weather or if our house is prepared or if we have different places that we're not going to be using. We have to winterize them and prepare them to withstand through the season of winter to then be able to be used or be prepared for the season of spring and summer. So with that being said, I just want to leave you guys with that, that though the seasons change, his love remains and I just want to declare a blessing over your life and if you are in a tough season, know that there is a good season to come and know that the Lord is with you. He's present. He's there. He's so near and so close to you and he will never leave you, but the key is to know how close is our Father to us today and what are we supposed to be doing today in our current season while knowing that as soon as the season changes or when it does his love is still with us and it doesn't go anywhere
Wow, I am feeling so encouraged even just sharing this with you guys. So I want to thank you for listening and joining in and being a part of this podcast. And I hope you enjoyed this episode. Until next time.